the makers of Camel Cigarettes present Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Steady pack after pack smoking is the only sensible way to tell how a cigarette will get along with your throat. In a test from coast to coast, hundreds of people smoked only camels for 30 days. Noted throat specialists made weekly examinations and reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. Make your own camel 30-day test. Smoke only camels for 30 days. See how well camels agree with your throat pack after pack week after week. Here transcribed is Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency. Help. Rick, what's the matter? Just that, Helen, dear. Help. I haven't had a client in three weeks. Oh, well, I'll take you to dinner tonight and fatten you up. No, I'm not hungry. You couldn't just send the money, could you? No, go ahead and starve. Ferdy Parker asked me to dinner anyway. You remember Ferdy. Oh, sure, your old boyfriend, the very old one. Rick Ferdy's really a very nice boy. He plays polo divinely. So do horses. Well, do I go out with Ferdy or don't I? Helen, and lose the chance of watching me stuff myself? Now, you tell Ferdy you've got to do some research on a tapeworm. I'll see you in ten minutes. Bye. Bye. Diamond? That's right, but I'm leaving now. Come back tomorrow. This won't wait till tomorrow. My name's Duke Crandall. How do you do? Pretty well in the dark. <laughs> but I get so annoyed when people keep me waiting over an hour. Oh, hello, Helen. Yeah, well, I took a nap. That's nice. Bye. Mm, uh, honey, honey, now, wait a minute. Thirteen guys just beat me up. What did he look like? Well, he... Hmm. Well, he was very big and it was dark and I couldn't see him. Maybe it was Ferdy Parker. He's really a brute at heart. No, this guy was breathing. Rick, did someone really hit you? Oh, honey, I may be kidding, but this bump on my head isn't. But why? The man didn't just walk in and hit you for no reason at all, did he? No, it's a hobby. Rick. Helen, Helen, if you don't believe me, just sit tight. I, I'm going down to the 5th Precinct to see Walt Levinson. I'll drop around and show you my bruises. Hello, Rick. How's the... Well, what happened to you? I got engaged. She was lovely. Use gunpowder. <laughs> Better get a beefsteak for that eye. My eye's not hungry. What I want now is to find a guy, Walt. Who? Said his name was Duke Crandall. Crandall? We've been looking for the Duke ever since he jumped bail on a blackmail charge. Oh? Hmm. Know where he is now? If we did, he'd be in jail. How'd you get mixed up with him? Uh, I wish I knew. He just came into the office and sold me a fistful of dreams. You, uh... Sure it was the Duke? What'd he look like? Or oh, couldn't see him too well in the dark. He was a big guy. Wore a flashy plaid overcoat. Yeah, yeah, the overcoat fits. Duke's a natty dresser. You can look over his record for yourself, Rick. No, you, uh, so you're looking for this guy? Yeah, he's somewhere in the city. It's anybody's guess where. What about this blackmail charge? He was, uh, bleeding a city official. Duke used to work for Benny Rathman, the gambler. Some think Benny was behind it, but uh, Duke's the only one we could grab off. Mm. Who put up his bail? Rathman? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Until now, we thought maybe Benny had killed Duke after he bailed him out, uh, so he couldn't pin the job on him. Here, here's a package. 
Uh, don't worry, he's still alive. I got the bruises to prove it. Hmm. What about this Benny Rathman? You think he'd know where Duke is? Mm, it's hard to say. If he did, I think he'd try and get rid of him. See, the DA's been trying to pin something on Ben for a long time. And if we find Duke and Benny is implicated in the blackmail, <laughs> it'll be the DA's meat. Oh, I catch, I catch. So if Duke's smart, he, he let Benny bail him out and then goes in hiding before Benny can get to him. Uh -huh. That'll make him twice as hard to find. You really going looking for him, eh? Yeah, might as well. I don't mind getting slugged, but I'd like to know the reason why. <laughs> Thanks, Walt. I left the 5th Precinct and hailed cab. The fresh air made my head feel better, but my pride hurt all the way to the Blue Chip Club, owned and operated by Benny Rathman. As we pulled up, I lit a camel, came to a little, and when I walked inside the club, I found a dissipated pianist playing worn-out love songs on a worn-out piano. Hi. Hi. Like my playing? Not particularly. Me neither. Your boss around? Maybe. Back room? Maybe. Alone? Again, maybe. Thanks for the brilliant conversation. Maybe. I enjoyed it. Hey. Hello, Benny. Well, Diamond. Don't you ever knock? Only a gender, I mean. We'll grab a chair. Not every day we get a visit from the Richard Diamond. Well, roll down your sleeves. Your goosebumps are showing. I'm allergic to stupid remarks. Benny, Duke Crandall used to be on your payroll. Where is he now? Looking for the Duke, eh? Now, that's a coincidence. So am I. And you just don't happen to know where he is, huh? That's right. I put up bail for Duke and then he skipped. I don't like that. Go on. That's all. Duke cost me a lot of money. Yeah, I'd sure like to have a little chat with him. Mm-hmm. Well, I bet Duke would wind up speechless. You know, if he's caught, you'll be in hot water, Benny. So I've been in hot water before. Not recently, I'll bet. Keep it up. I may grow to hate you. I'll work on it. Look, Diamond, that blackmail wraps all Dukes. I'm an honest businessman. For that line, you should be a comedian. Benny, hmm? did Duke ever mention my name around here? Maybe. He used to swear a lot. Oh, very funny. <laughs> Why all this interest in Duke, Snooper? I owe him something, that's all. I'd like to pay my debts. Oh, gee, I'm sure sorry I can't help you, pal. Save the tears till I leave, Benny. Wait a minute. Here. Well, what's this? The address of Duke's old girlfriend. Name's Patty Carroll. She won't talk to me, but maybe she'll help you. Well, it's worth a try. And if you should locate the Duke, let me know, huh? I'd still like to have that little talk with him. Maybe I will. If he's in any condition to talk. I left the blue chip and went across town to the flat of one Patty Carroll. Benny described her as a one-time girlfriend of Duke's, and when she opened the door, I, uh, I had respect for Duke's taste. She had the kind of figure that drives architects mad, and uh, any other type of man, too, for that matter. Hi. You the television man? Uh, do I look like a television man? How should I know? You're cute. Well, thanks. So are you. I guess they could have cute television men. I don't see why not. But I'm not one of them. Oh, shoot. Three days I've been waiting for that set. Mm, heartbreaking. Ain't it, though? My brother says, Patty... That's my name, Patty. He says you got to get a television set, see a lot of educational programs and such. He says it makes you appreciate the finer things in life. Yeah, like radio. So I get me a television set, but the guy ain't shown up yet. What do you want? Well, I'm glad you got around to that. Honey, I, uh, I want, a, want a little information. I'm no library. I'm no bookworm. Mind if I come in? All depends. You a gentleman? All depends. I eat with a fork. Mm hmm. You sure look all right. Only I wish you were the television man. Patty, at times, so do I. Now, what's on your mind? Duke Crandall. Oh, you must be a cop then. Hey, I like cops. 
I used to think it was fun to date hoods, but my brother says, Patty, that's what he calls me. Patty, he says, you got to quit running around with the hoods. So now I like cops. Hmm, very commendable change. Yeah, hoods are always getting sent to prison. And who did you say you were looking for? Duke Crandall. Oh, yeah. I used to date Duke till my brother said... Uh, where's Duke now, Patty? I don't know. We broke up Duke and me. He was always slapping me and ruining my makeup. Look, honey, think hard, will you? Do you know any of Duke's friends who might know where he is now? Mm, uh, let me see. Yeah, I, I know one guy, Joey Thompson. Him and Duke used to play cards every Friday. Where does Thompson live? How should I know? Well, just wishful thinking. Mind if I use your phone? Mm, I guess not. Only don't be long. The television man might be trying to call me. Uh, this will only take a minute. Lieutenant Levinson. Well, I got a problem. Oh. You know a guy named Joey Thompson? Thompson? I know a Charlie. Oh, yeah, yeah, Joe, Joe Thompson. Yeah, I know him. Used to be a small-time pickpocket. Where can I get in touch with him? <laughs> Last I heard, he had a legit job. Runs a watch repair shop on Fountain Street. You can get the address in the phone book. Thanks, Walt. Call you later if anything develops. And thank you, Patty. You leaving? Don't you want to stay and watch television when it gets here? Oh, no, thanks. No, no, no. All that violence makes me nervous. Well, drop in again any time. Hoppy goes on at eight, doesn't he? <laughs> Patty had few brains and many curves and was the type you hated to leave. But Joey Thompson might lead me to Duke Crandall. And curves can be dangerous if you don't watch your speed, I always say. The hall outside Patty's rock, and as I walked down it, I had the strangest feeling that someone was behind me. Two seconds later, the strange feeling became one I was thoroughly familiar with. Oh, oh the walls spun around and I spun with them. But on the way down, I caught sight of what had hit me. An ugly blackjack held by an ugly hand sticking out of the prettiest plaid overcoat you ever saw. Before we continue with Richard Diamond, here is an important question. Will one puff or one sniff tell you how mild a cigarette is? No, but steady smoking will. Try Camels for 30 days as your steady smoke. Enjoy Camels' rich, full flavor. Let your throat tell you how mild Camels are. Pack after pack, week after week. Hundreds of men and women from coast to coast made the Camel 30-day test under the supervision of leading throat specialists who examined their throats every week. Those throat specialists reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. Start your own camel 30-day test tonight. You'll get day-in, day-out proof of camels' mildness and flavor. And you'll know why, after all the mildness testing of recent years, Camel leads all other brands in popularity by billions. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? For camels and see. And now back to Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. At approximately 5 p.m., I had been worked over by a man named Duke Crandall, wearing a plaid overcoat. One hour later, I received the second installment, again by the man in the plaid overcoat. Monotonous? You know it. Hey. Mm. Hey, wake up. Oh. Come on. Come on, that's a boy. You all right? Oh, 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 oh. yeah. Well, my, my head feels like a mashed potato. But... I heard the noise outside. You shouldn't lie around on the floor. Yeah, I so know. So I dragged you in here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Patty. I, I'll remember you in my will, which may be in effect before long. Who slugged you? Uh, your old boyfriend, Duke Crandall. Oh, that bully. What's he got against you? That's what I want to find out. Yeah. Let me fix that ice pack. Uh, no, thanks, honey. Hey, now, you shouldn't get up now. I know. I, I like to show off. Where's your phone book? Over there. Thanks. Now, let's see. Um, Patty, what does tea come after? I should know. 
Thompson, 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 oh, here it is. Thompson Watch Repair, 19 Fountain Street. You going to see Joey? That's the general idea. I bet he won't talk to you. He can smell a cop a mile away. Well, they can't shoot me for trying. On second thought, maybe they can. Besides, maybe Duke ain't even in town. Maybe he's gone back to Arkansas. No, he's still around. I... What did you say? I said maybe Duke's gone back to Arkansas. That's where he came from. Does Joey Thompson know that? I guess so. Duke's always blowing about it. Thanks again, Patty. Okay. Say, you ain't gonna drive in that condition, are you? Of course. I'm too dizzy to walk. I stepped out into the hall. This time, I looked carefully around to make sure no plaid overcoats were following me. The hall was empty, and immediately my head felt better. Ten minutes later, I arrived at Joey's watch repair shop on Fountain Street. I stopped outside, pulled my pants up too high, turned my hat rim back, and then went in. Yeah, what can I do for you? Well, my name's uh, Harold Applenocker from uh, Big Lake, Arkansas. Well, how are you, Mr. Applesocker? Applenocker, Harold. Oh. Well, uh, you got a watch? Watch? No, nope, no, nope, never use them. Down home, we go by the sun and the hogs. When the sun's straight up, it's noon, and when the hogs holler, it's dinner time. Now look, pal, we don't repair hogs. Now, what do you want? Well, sir, I'm uh, I'm looking for a fellow named Crandall. Uh, oh, now, uh, what's, what's that fellow's first name? Uh, something like Prince or King or... Uh, oh, I, I don't know. It's, it's one of them royalty fellas. Duke, maybe? That's it, Duke. That's the fella. You got the wrong place. Now, beat it. Oh, doggone it. That's what everybody tells me. Sure wish I could find that fella, give him his money, and go back home. The city life is killing me. Did you say money? Yeah, that's what I said, money. Plain as could be. You see, my cousin Josh is one of them lawyer fellas, and this Duke fella's uncle died and left him some money. Uncle Josh sent me up here to find him, and doggone, I sure wish I could. How much money? Friend, I don't rightly know. But Uncle Josh says it's enough to buy a poke of pigs, two or three farms. That'd be a lot, huh? Sure would be, Fred. Sure would be. Hmm. You could use some dough. You sure you're on a level? Well, I think so. Had to come up a hill to get here, but I do believe never that... Never mind, I... never mind. You uh, got the money for Duke? No, nope, but I got this year paper I'm supposed to watch him sign, and then Uncle Josh will send him the money. Well... Wait a minute. You stay right there. So far, so good. Joy went into the back room, and I heard him dial. I couldn't hear the conversation, but I knew he was talking to Duke. Two minutes later, he came back out. Okay, pal. I'll take you to Duke. Why, now, that'd be right neighborly. Only I don't want to take you away from your work, and you just tell me where I can find him. Uh, 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 Duke says to bring you. The shop will keep. Now move. Joey locked the door, and then we went to his car and drove to the warehouse section. He pulled up in front of a deserted warehouse, stopped, and blew his horn twice. Pretty soon, a big man wearing striped trousers and a loud check sport coat came out of the warehouse and over to the car. This had to be Duke Crandall. This is the guy, Joey? Yeah, Duke. Okay, Hicks, start talking. Uh, Applenocker, Harold Applenocker. You dropped I... that business. You told Joey my uncle left me some dough. Oh, you ain't got an uncle, friend. No, I was afraid of that. Yeah. Now, what's your name? How about a Swedish dialect? Got any uncles in Sweden? Well, you see, Duke, I told you over the phone he was a fake. Yeah, it's good work, Joey. Now, get out, bud. I want to know why you were looking for me. I didn't know where you were. Get out, he said. Oh, all right. Maybe somebody followed this boy, Joey. Drive back up the alley and keep a lookout. I'll take care of him. Right, Duke. In the warehouse, Buster. That's good. Now you better tell me what's your angle. I suppose you tell me first. I don't get you. Turn on a light. My name's Diamond, remember? The guy you nominated for a punching bag. You don't make sense. What? I don't know anyone named Diamond. Where are your lights? I still don't know you. 
You stand there and tell me you've never seen me before? Yeah, that's right. I suppose you'd do some talking. Well, all I know is that a guy in a plaid overcoat came into my office and said he was Duke Crandall. Then he sapped me. An hour later, the same guy in the same overcoat repeated the process. So you came looking for me? That's it. Well, that's too bad. I'm going to have to take care of you, Diamond. You might just mention where I'm hiding. Oh. Then Benny Rathman's really after you, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad that you had to stumble into this. Well, I guess it just ain't my day. This is a lonely place. Let's get it over. Wait a minute. Must be Joey. Hey, Joey. Joey! Joey's taking a little nap, Duke. What the... Don't turn this way with that gun or you'll be a dead man. The man with the threat was Benny Rathman, standing in the doorway with a forty-five in his hand. And what interested me was his wearing apparel, a flashy plaid overcoat. Well, Duke, you picked a nice hideaway. And thanks, Diamond. Well, whatever you mean, you're not welcome. Well, finding Duke, smart boy. You see, I knew you'd never take my money if I tried to hire you to find him. So I posed as him in this overcoat. I knew you'd get mad enough and look for him on your own. Well, aren't you cute? Thanks. It was easy. Tailed you, and you brought me right here. Hey, look, Benny, let's talk all this over, eh? I, I wasn't going to rat on you. Hey, look, I'll, I'll even take the rap on that blackmail okay, charge, but... I like you, but business is business. But I... <laughs> no buts, Stokey. Now you, Diamond. I was afraid you'd get around to that. But then I'm not really worried. You're not a very good shot, even at close range. What? You didn't even kill Duke. Get him, Duke. The ruse worked, and Benny turned around quickly. He was too far away for me to lunge at him, so I grabbed the next best thing, the light switch. All right, Diamond. I should have expected some trick from you, but I've got lots of time. You've got no gun. <laughs> Let's play cat and mouse, huh? I crouched behind some crates as Benny came closer. He was right about the gun. I felt as helpless as a rabbit in a traffic jam. And then I noticed there were three crates piled on top of the one I was behind. It was a long chance, but better than none at all. Benny got closer, and I waited. It'll be soon, Diamond. I'm getting accustomed to the dark now. I'll find that light switch soon, and I'll get you... The crates hit Benny and knocked him off balance. I raced out and lunged in the general vicinity of a plaid overcoat. My left hand caught a flabby stomach, and the gun went clattering to the floor. Then my free right hand went hunting for a bobbing head. It found it. All right. All right, Betty, get up. Oh. I beg your pardon? Oh. Well, I'll quote you on that. Now then. Upsy daisy. Oh. a boy. Oh, my head. Hurts, doesn't it? But you know, Benny, you hit me twice today, and I've only hit you once. Now, that's hardly fair, is it? <laughs> your eye. Oh, still at half mass. Here, put this steak on it. That? That's a whole cow. You could feed a family with that thing. Now stop clowning and put it on your eye. Um, well, well, all right. Notice anything different? Yeah, it covers my whole face. No. I mean about me. Hmm? No. New dress? Mm-mm. Mm. New hairdo? Mm-mm. Well, you're too young for new teeth. I give up. New perfume. Smell. Mmm, nice. Yeah. What's the occasion? Oh, after you broke the dinner date, Ferdy Parker dropped in for a little while. Oh, good for Ferdy. Did he make it under his own steam? Oh, Rick, aren't you even a little bit jealous? Of course not, honey. 
I'm broad-minded. You mean thick-skulled. <laughs> oh, Helen, dear, I was only kidding. I noticed something different as soon as I came in. Oh? Yeah. You finally got your piano tune. Rick! When we are dancing and you're dangerously near me, I get ideas, I get ideas. I want to hold you so much closer than I dare to. I want to scold you cause I care more than I care to. And when you touch me in this fire in every finger, I get ideas, oh, I get ideas. <laughs> And after we have kissed goodnight and still you linger, I kind of think you get ideas too. Your eyes are always saying the things you're never saying. I only hope they're saying that you could love me too. For that's the whole idea, it's true. That lovely idea that I've fallen in love with you. Rick. Mm-hmm. I, um, uh, I'm also wearing a new lipstick. Why, Helen, aren't we full of surprises tonight? <laughs> Come here. <sighs> and people feel sorry for me when I get beat up. <laughs> Dick Powell will return in just a minute. Camels lead all other brands in popularity by billions. And here's the reason. Millions of Americans have discovered Camels' rich, delightful flavor. A flavor no other cigarette has. They found out how mild Camels are. How well Camels agree with their throats. Start enjoying the cigarette that's enjoyed most in America. Start enjoying mild, flavorful Camels tonight. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Make the camel 30-day test and you'll see. Smoke camels and see. Here's Dick Powell with a special message. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1952, as in the past, the makers of camels will continue to send thousands of packs of camels to hospitalized men and women of the armed forces every week. This week, the gift camels go to... Veterans Hospitals, Wichita, Kansas, and Montgomery, Alabama. U.S. Army Station Hospital, Fort Custer, Michigan. U.S. Naval Hospital, Pensacola, Florida. And to the Military Air Transport Service, which evacuates virtually all overseas wounded personnel. Now until next week, enjoy camels. I always do. <laughs> Dick Powell can now be seen starring in the Universal International film You Never Can Tell. Tonight's transcribed adventure of Richard Diamond was written by Dick Carr with music by Frank Worth. Our director was Nat Wolfe. Virginia Gregg played the part of Helen Asher. Alan Reed was Lieutenant Levinson. Others in the cast were Herb Butterfield, Sidney Miller, Sandra Gould, and Sheldon Leonard. There's more genuine pipe-smoking pleasure in Prince Albert. Let the singers tell you why. The bite is out and the pleasure's in when you smoke Prince Albert. It's specially treated not to bite your tongue. The bite is out and the pleasure's in. Pack your pipe with Prince Albert, the national joy smoke. The bite's out and the pleasure's in. And now there's more tobacco in every tin. Listen next week for another exciting adventure of Richard Diamond, starring Dick Powell. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the FBI follows immediately. Stay tuned. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the American Broadcasting Company.